Vamos aquí a la prueba de manejo del Mercedes-Benz C-Class 2015. ¿Cómo estás, Heiko? I'm good. Excellent. Here. Here at the beautiful Mondrian National Park in the new 2015 C-Class. It's a perfect setting for this car, huh? Beautiful, yeah. yeah. So, Heiko, um, this car is no longer the entry level for uh, Mercedes-Benz, huh? Yeah, it's no longer the, no longer the baby Benz. Uh, as you know, we launched the CLA in September of last year. So the CLA is successfully taking that spot of getting new customers into the brand and it allowed the, the C-Class to move up slightly in the portfolio. And uh, so this car also allows you to make it, I guess, bigger and put more stuff in it, huh? Yeah, bigger. I mean, the car grows almost four inches. Um, That's which, a lot, no? Uh, big, bigger is always better in the US. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, it's, it's nice because it does have considerably more space in the interior, especially for the rear passengers. Also grows a little bit in, in width, so you notice you have a little more elbow room and then shoulder room. Um, and yeah, we, we put a bunch of uh, extra standard equipment in it, which overall um, make this car feel like almost like it's, it's from another city. Yeah. So especially in that part, that, that caught my attention yesterday during the presentation, because especially in the technology, Mercedes-Benz is always uh, ahead of the, of the game in technology. And this car has a lot of things that, just like the previous generation, were like expensive options. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, a lot of things that were either optional on the predecessor or not even available. Um, it's, say, pre-save, for instance. Uh, the predecessor it was available as part of the driver assistance package. Uh, now this car is actually standard, our occupant uh, protection system. Uh, most noticeable for me, uh, almost not worthy, is the Collision Prevention Assist Plus that is standard on this car. It's a radar-based uh, collision prevention system. Uh, it can either prevent collisions completely or it can at least um, mitigate the, the severity of, the, of an impact. Um, and, and making such a feature standard on a car really is what, what we think makes an impact on, on safety and traffic, just like ESP or Airbags a few years yeah. ago. And that, uh, that, that was inherited from the S-Class, right? I mean, you started with all those kind of technologies in the S-Class, now are the E-Class, and now here. Yeah, we call all those features intelligent drive. Um, it sums it up pretty nicely because it's a bunch of different features and systems and, and sensors working together, communicating with each other. Um, and so it actually makes for, for an intelligent car. And the C-Class pretty much has all the features with just one or two exceptions that we've launched on the flagship S-Class uh, just just about nine months back. And, and that's where we think, you know, it, it's great to have those features on a $100,000 car, but having it available in a $40,000 car uh, is, is the biggest impact. So uh, being the price, I mean, it's not that close because the CLA starts at 29,900, and this one will start around what, 38? 38,400 will be the price for the C300 we will drive. Uh, so uh, let's talk a little bit about powertrains because you said that you mentioned the 300. What, what's in that? Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, C-Class C300, a new two-liter four-cylinder direct injection engine, turbocharged, 241 horsepower and 273 pound-foot of torque. And what's nice is um, that torque is available at 1300 RPM, and that's what you can clearly tell when you drive it. There's a lot of grunt from, from low RPMs. Um, the second powertrain that we launch with is a C400 uh, formatic. Now that car is going to be main all-wheel drive only. Uh, also, brand new engine, 3 liter bi turbo, 329 horsepower, and 354 pound foot of torque. Which is the one that we're driving now. That's the one we're driving today, exactly. Um, and there will be new powertrains and additional powertrains. We're definitely going to launch a, uh, a G variant as well. Uh, just about uh, six months from now, uh, we'll, uh, we'll already announce a C Class plug in hybrid. So we'll see that wow. sometime next year. And uh, for the first time, we'll also see a four cylinder diesel engine in the C Class. Four cylinder diesel for, for the States for the C Class one. Well. And the, the diesel engines are have been ca catching up in the States in popularity, right? I mean, yeah, we, we do see that customer perception on, on diesel cars is changing. Um, mostly as people now, if they see them more on the road, uh, they, they drive the cars and they realize that it's no longer the diesel of the 80s when, when they when you start them and they blow out this big black smoke. Um, it's, it's a very refined engine and in many ways it's a more efficient alternative to a hybrid. Yeah. And uh, I guess there's a little bit still of an educational curve that the customers have to get uh, and, 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 
get, get to because, I mean, the perception is still there, but the new technologies are amazing, especially with Mercedes-Benz in Europe, you had it forever, and I, yeah. they're very popular over there. Yeah, they're very popular over there. You know, there's markets like um, France, for instance, 70, 80 percent diesel share. Yeah. Um, so slowly we're getting the U.S. customer to understand the advantages of a, of a diesel engine in particular E-Class, for instance. E250 Tech, the car is 45 miles per gallon highway. Better than a hybrid, a little it, hybrid. Exactly, and at the, at the same time, it, it gives you all the bells and whistles that you, know, you can ask for. It's a very comfortable car to drive. Um, so w what's not to like about a combination like, like that? Okay. So uh, the C-Class traditionally has been the, the largest, bo largest uh, volume of uh, sales for Mercedes-Benz. Is there going to be a big competition with the CLA now? You know, the CLA was never intended to replace the C-Class as the volume leader for Mercedes-Benz, neither globally nor in the U.S. So the C-Class will definitely remain the volume car. And if you look back last year, uh, 2013, in its second last year of life cycle, we sold close to 80,000 C-Classes. Uh, the CLA will, will not get into, into that territory. Um, again, the CLA does a fantastic job getting new buyers into the brand. Uh, so far, it's about 75% of CLA customers yeah. uh, have not having been Mercedes customers so far. And even more interesting, 50% um, of those 75% are coming from non-premium brands. So yeah, because the price gap is not that far away anymore. Exactly. All of a sudden, people realize that for the same for the same money or just a little more, they can get themselves a the Mercedes with everything that they associate with the Mercedes, you know, the quality, the safety, the service at the, in the yeah. dealership. Um, so that the CLA takes that role successfully. Um, we're introducing the GLA uh, in September this year, so it's gonna do the same thing for us in, in the SUV segment. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's been fantastic, but we did not see any substitution and cannibalization from CLAs. Right. Um, actually, sometimes even the opposite is happening. The, the CLA has been so much asked for that we were running out of cars at some point. Um, it's a good problem to have. Huh? It's a good problem to have. And what happens is customers come into the showroom and are a little, a little disappointed that there's no CLA available and the, the salesperson um, you know, upsells them into a CLAs. So that's a, that's a good thing that happens from time to time. Well, and uh, the final question, there's a uh, big news about this car being built in the U.S. Yes, and we are extremely proud to announce that uh, this, this car for the U.S. market will exclusively build in Tuscaloosa, in our plant down in Alabama. Um, we've been building our SUV lineup there for years, uh, and uh, so this plant will build exclusively for the United States, and we'll get our C-Classes exclusively from Tuscaloosa. So uh, there's a number of advantages that go with that, and also a certain sense of pride that all of a sudden we're now... Made in the USA. Exactly. Well, Heiko, thank you very much for the time. Perfect okay. timing. We drove from the top of the mountain to the base, so I think if we have time in it before, we couldn't have done it. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Okay.